Hi everyone, welcome to week three. Uh, we're going to begin by talking about validity and soundness, which are two crucial concepts we'll be using throughout the course. Okay, let's begin with a technical term. The term is argument. Now, we often think of arguments as heated discussions between people about, say, spending too much money or politics. But in this case, an argument is a collection of sentences we call premises that purport to entail a conclusion or alternatively a conclusion that is supposed to follow from a set of premises. And I say purport to because not all arguments work the way they're supposed to. This is a very complicated and difficult subject. Actually, it's a major portion of my thesis. But when an argument does follow logically, we say that it's valid. Validity, then, is our second technical term. And what it means to say that an argument is valid is that if the premises are true, then so is the conclusion. Notice the important term here, if. It doesn't have to be that the premises are true in order for the argument to be valid. It just has to be the case that if they're true, then the conclusion is as well. So here, for instance, is an example of a valid argument that might strike us as having something missing nevertheless. All dogs are Martians. All Martians have tails. Therefore, all dogs have tails. Clearly, the first premise is false. And so is the second one. But the conclusion is true. So here we have premises which, although they're false, don't lead to a false conclusion. Here's another argument that even has a false conclusion. So all whales are mammals. All mammals can fly. So all whales can fly. The first of these premises is true. The second is false. And the conclusion is also false. Nevertheless, both of these arguments are valid. What are they missing, though? Well, not all the sentences involved are true. So what's missing here is soundness, and that's our next technical term. So an argument is sound if, first of all, it's valid, which is to say that if its premises are true, then its conclusion is also true, and if its premises are true. So here's an example of such an argument. All humans are mortal. That's true. Socrates is a human. Also true. So Socrates is mortal. This argument is not only valid, but sound. Now, it has to be that there's some special connection between premises and conclusion in order to meet these requirements. Any collection of true statements is not necessarily sound or even valid. For instance, consider this one. So here, Mars is a planet. That's true. Mars is smaller than Jupiter. Also true. So Jupiter is a planet. Also true. Yet this argument is not valid. Why? Well, consider a counterexample in our blocks language. Now let's suppose these two are true. It doesn't mean that this one can't be false. We don't know. It very well could be. The problem then is that this does not have a valid form, which is to say that although it has the same form as this invalid argument here, Mars is a planet, Mars is smaller than Jupiter, so Jupiter is a planet, it doesn't always follow based on the form of the sentences that the conclusion is true. Now, logical form is an incredibly difficult thing, and it's something that we're going to be grappling with later on. So what this second argument is, is a counterexample to this argument here. It has the same form, but it doesn't necessarily follow. We're going to discuss counterexamples in a later video. For now, the goal is just to clarify these technical terms. So an argument is a set of premises and a conclusion, where the conclusion is supposed to follow from the premises. An argument is valid if, supposing that the premises are true, the conclusion is true as well. So we have these examples of valid arguments. But notice that these arguments aren't sound. An argument is sound just in case it's valid and its premises are also true. That wraps up the first lecture.